A lawsuit was filed to uncover exactly how the U.S. government agencies spy on journalists and if there's anything stopping them from doing it. This comes as Attorney, Je Attorney General Jeff Sessions made comments about how criminal investigations into journalist sources are up and after a serious uh, crackdown on whistleblowers that took place for years under the Obama administration. Joining me to talk about this is host for The Big Picture and dear friend Holland Cook. Holland, let's start with the most recent story on this uh, Sessions boasting that DOJ has 27 investigations ongoing over leaks to journalists. Is this truly a matter of national security concerns or is this just government intimidation of the press uh, as, as some have called it. What is your take on that, Holland? Well, this was bound to come to a head because since Donald Trump was inaugurated, the White House has been leaking worse than a sailboat I used to own, uh, less so lately. But for a while, the running gag at the White House was instead of saying good morning to each other, they'd say, are you wearing a wire? Uh, and all seriousness aside, <laughs> uh, the AG himself says that these investigations are up 800 percent. So without even knowing the hard before and after numbers of how many open manila folders there were, an 800 percent rise in anything has got to be intimidating if you're the press. Well, you know, you've been in this business so long. You are, you know, you absolutely have watched this develop over the years. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you've been the target of some of this. Uh, has it gotten worse in your estimation? Uh, it's, As you've watched this progress. Well, it gets scary when you have the uh, then-candidate Trump calling out correspondents in the back of the room by name. And the way that uh, this stuff takes wings in social media, you hope is taken with a grain of salt. And, uh, you know, if I'm a reporter at the end of an event, uh, I'm not sure I want to walk out to the car alone sometimes. Uh, one thing leads to another. So uh, the intimidation is for real, yeah. Well, you remember Richard Nixon, of course, both you and I lived through that, where Nixon was just, we, we know that he was targeting journalists. One of them he tried to kill. I mean, uh, the story, I'm not making that stuff. I mean, it's right in the history book sure. where there's questions about, well, did he trade money to have somebody killed? Yeah. Uh, you remember the story? Yeah. Hey, and, if, and, if you so haven't... So what, what I'm wondering here... If you haven't seen it in the uh, theater go yet, go on uh, YouTube and look at the trailer for The Post. Uh, Tom Hanks is Ben Bradley, the managing editor of The Washington Post. Meryl Streep channels Katherine Graham, and it's all about the Pentagon Papers. And you will get chills just watching the trailer. I can't wait for the movie. Yeah, I, I got chills when I read the book. It's it's a terrifying story uh, about Daniel Ellsberg. Who are the people that filed this lawsuit, and exactly what are they trying to uncover? Uh, I mean, how do you see... How do you see this as a move to protect freedom of the press? They are friends of a free press. Uh, brothers James and John Knight, as in Knight Ritter newspapers, established that Knight uh, First Amendment Institute to defend freedom of the press and free speech. And uh, also party to the suit is the Freedom of the Press Foundation, which is another nonprofit that's all about mismanagement, and government corruption, and law breaking. And this suit is about trying to figure out where the hash marks are on the field. How does the government decide whom to surveil in the press in search of leaks they're trying to plug? The New York Times ran a headline that read, if Donald, something to the effect, if Donald Trump targets journalists, we can thank Obama for that. I have, as you know, been a huge critic of Obama where it comes to his relationship with journalists for so many reasons and many stories I've done. Uh, that gets into my next question. How did the Obama administration contribute to creating this hostile environment that, re that, that exists for the media? Now, we, we both know it started with the whistleblowers yep. where, you know, we heard Obama on one hand saying, yeah, I'm really going to protect the whistleblowers. And yep. the next thing we know, we got Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder going after people who are trying to tell their story. What is your take on that? Yeah, the press and the White House are always going to have an awkward relationship. And a couple of years ago, Tom Brokaw said he's not going to that correspondence dinner anymore. He just felt as though it was a little awkward to be socializing with the people that they're supposed to have in their laser gaze. And uh, the Obama administration used a World War II one law called the Espionage Act to try and plug some leaks. And in the Fourth uh, Court of Appeals, Fourth Circuit, they got a ruling that said that there is no such thing as reporter's privilege. 
Uh, now, I'm, I'm in the weeds a bit, but as a lawyer, you know that the Fourth Circuit covers Virginia and Maryland, where you have the CIA, the Pentagon, the NSA, et cetera, in their jurisdiction. So mm. it, it's chilling, and it's not a matter of Dems versus Republicans. It's a matter of uh, journalists uh, keeping at arm's length from the people they cover on behalf of their readers and viewers mm. and listeners. You know, I remember back in college having to write about the church hearings. Let's talk about that a second. I know you're well familiar with it, where we found out that part of the, the FBI and the CIA had actually been released to go after journalists. This was under the Nixon administration. Sure. But we had the FBI that they weren't, I mean, it was worse than just targeting. You know, we had the FBI. Now, think about this. Hoover is a guy who dressed, lived at home with mom, dressed up like Shirley Temple, okay, <laughs> in the know. privacy of his home, dressed up like Shirley <laughs> Temple. This is the guy making decisions on which journalists we want to go after. They named a, build, they named a building after him. You know, this, is, this guy was a freak. He was a nut. But he was making decisions on which journalists we're going to go after. What, what's your memory of that and what's your take on it? Well, they had dossiers on everybody, not just journalists. But I mean, if I'm Daniel Shore back then, I'm looking over my shoulder in the supermarket in Georgetown because there was an enemies list. The president actually had a list of people he considered enemies, including people who were reporting on the government to us. So this is nothing new, but it's all accelerated with the advent of social media. And frankly, who is the press now? For about 10 years, the National Football League has been credentialing bloggers at the Super Bowl. The old gag about freedom of the press is it belongs to anybody who can afford one. And uh, who is it? Oscar Wilde, who said, never argue with anybody who buys ink by the barrel. Well, now anybody with a $300 computer can start a blog and can take on the clout of a journalist, can appear to be reporting on something. And all of this Russia, Russia, Russia stuff that we've been hearing about for months is knuckleheads in dimly lit rooms, chain smoking in some troll farm who knows where, pretending to be US-based <laughs> blogs and publications yeah. talking to, arguing with each other. So the modern conundrum is that it's not like when you and I grow up and you had CBS and NBC and ABC and you had the newspaper because in the digital age, there is really no credential. There's no license that says who is a journalist. Mm, yeah. So who gets busted?